So I'm thinking what to say to you. What brings me and you together? What is what do we have in common? And I'm just thinking to myself, you know, we're all breathing and with breathing comes feeling and that's the whole human experience. Dealing with all our emotions, our perceptions, our ideas, our opinions. Yesterday I had a very you know, crazy day and it was like a roller coaster up and down and all around and it was quite an unusual day to feel, you know, pangs of melancholy, you know, feeling coursing through my veins and then also, you know, when I finished work and, you know, you know, made that video where I was in the restaurant and the lady is talking to me, the server, and she's so kind to me to see that wow but good good things are always coming and uh, then on my way home which took even longer because there was so much traffic on the road I had the time to really appreciate music which I really love and music just transports me to another world and I thought what so today I wanted to share with you a video to just say everybody has their ups and downs I don't want you to think that I don't either and you know I have my foibles today I went on my I used my housemate's bike because um, I took the tire off my bike and I didn't know how to put it on. <laughs> I know, it's very silly. And so, basically, I went shopping with my, my housemate. We went cycling. Her bicycle goes 10 kilometers an hour. <laughs> so you can imagine how slow we were going. And, you know, we finally got to the shop. And then there was a fruit shop and, you know, that's like my candy shop, the fruit and veggie shop, you know, I get excited. Then I put all my food in the basket, and as we were cycling home, the basket broke. <laughs> it was really hilarious, and you know, like things like that happen, and you just have to laugh. You just have to laugh at yourself, laugh at that anything can happen, that sometimes funny things happen, like inconveniences, but if you laugh about it, you realize it's okay and I was with my housemate who's a really kind person and she helped me and I thought I'm so lucky to have good people in my life to help me you know to help me through times you know he imagined my basket fell off the bike so it's my friend it's my housemate's bike so I'm carrying his basket carrying a bag of food you know it was like five kilos of bananas and you know then this bicycle that the brakes are you know press too tight you know so and then there's my housemate who's on this 10 kilometer <laughs> 10 kilometer a minute or 10 kilometer an hour speed you know who's helping me <laughs> so i just thought i'm really lucky and then you know we cook together and you know i learned a lot from her today and then me and my three roommates roommates we ate together and as well i went on audition today to teach yoga at a gym which is a first time for me in a long time. I used to own a yoga studio many years ago, a lifetime ago. And then, you know, I became shy about being around crowds of people. So I think that was like one of the reasons why I stopped teaching yoga. And today was a groundbreaking day to go on an interview. And so there were other women who were teaching like group fitness and we had two people interviewing like a group of five me and four other ladies and so everybody taught a class like a really short 10 15 minute class and we all got involved in doing pilates and hit workout and all kind of <laughs> insane jumping around <laughs> and it was really great and i thought you know i don't know if i'll get the job or not and i think what i really wanted to say to you about it is just it was great to get out of my comfort zone to say, okay, let's try it. Let's, you know, it's one thing to talk to you on the phone because it, remember, it's just me and the phone and I don't know who's watching, you know, you're not there to, you know, like, it's not like if I'm in front of people and there's like, it's just me and a phone, so I feel free. It's another thing when there's actually a group of people and, you know, I'm seeing how they're doing and I know this is like the next step, you know, getting out of the comfort zone breaking challenging myself to break out of those you know little fears you know we all have little fears so so here I am sharing them with you that I think as we decide to grow we have to challenge ourselves to 
to say, okay, what's the next step? And the next step for me, of course, is getting out there and, you know, starting to teach people yoga classes, but in person, not just on videos. And I really enjoy my videos because I feel whoever is watching my videos, I, I really feel a deep affinity with you because I feel this is my art form. And I know you're thinking, how is this art? And I think it's because I'm sharing my heart with you. I'm sharing my honest sense of who I am. And, you know, no judgments, just being myself. And, you know, whatever you think, you know, you have to know that this is just putting out the best intention of always thinking, well, what can I give people? And today my message is that you just have to keep rolling with the punches and you got to challenge yourself to do something different and get out of that comfort zone as hard as it is like I said it is you know I was a little bit nervous I had made the I had gotten the call for the audition last week and I think every day subconsciously I was like are you really going to do this <laughs> are you really going to do this and today I, I, I went I walked there it's so close to my house and I arrived there early and I met the you know the the manager a very wonderful man and flamboyant and he just made me feel really at ease. And then, you know, I met the other ladies. And, and, you know, they were lovely ladies with their own distinct styles. And, you know, it was interesting to see all of us come together. And then at the end, the other lady interviewing us, because it was two people, a man and a woman. And the lady says to us, we're just looking for people who are really passionate about helping people and about knowing that they can help transform people's lives and that they care about people. And I think that's the whole thing, that if you can really, you know, whatever you're doing, whatever is your craft, you know, that you realize people are going to get affected by you and they're going to feel something by what you're doing, by what you're saying, whatever. The whole thing is to, to realize we each can help another, we each can have an impact on another person's life. But for that to happen, we first have to do our own inner work. And our own inner work is where we say, okay, is it time to branch out of the safe little cave that we've been in <laughs> and actually get out there and, you know, see? So today was really a, like a milestone for me to actually go to a gym, you know, since I've been so much in the nature, just walking or cycling after work or you know, do my yoga at home, you know, I'm not really in the whole group situation but to say okay you know it's not even just for money i'm not wealthy by any means but i'm i'm wealthy inside the technology of the soul is inside me so i really went today to see that maybe it's a time to see if everything that i've learned in my life might have an impact on other people you know the lady spoke about people trying to lose weight and people unhealthy with you know diseases and so they're going to the gym for a lot of different reasons and she said you know you have the chance to reach a lot of people who are not well or who are stressed out from work or from their life or from their marriage or from their job or from whatever they have going on in their life people come to the gym they just want to let go of that stress and she said you have the chance to to really change people's energy around, you know, with a class, with something you give people. And so I thought, well, that's what I'm trying to do <laughs> with my YouTube videos, by just talking to people and making people realize that no matter what walk of life you are coming from, no matter where you're coming from, you know, no matter what social status, what religion, wherever you're coming from, we're all breathing. And there's blood coursing through our veins. And no matter what we all feel, whether some people expose it, whether some people wear it on their sleeve, their emotion, or whether some people just bury it deep inside and they're like, I don't want to show people that I feel, I don't want to be vulnerable. You know, I want to keep it a distance from people. But I thought I wanted to say to you today that whatever you're going through, know that there's a silver lining I know that there's always light at the end of the tunnel because yesterday I was just 
enveloped in these waves of really sadness. I didn't really understand it completely. I mean, I understood that I was also challenging, you know, myself in a way being, you know, with a lot of people. But it was more than that. I felt like, I don't know if I was picking up other people's sadness as well. Maybe even people I don't know. But I felt this overwhelming, like, sadness and tragicness and just, I don't know how to describe it because I, I normally feel really good. <laughs> and I feel really, and I can owe that to feeling just grateful for what I have. You know, I, you know, I, I have a very simple life and I'm, I'm grateful for it. And I think that's the secret. I think if you're grateful for what you have, and you can, when you go outside, I just went outside, I, I walked to the, I walked to the interview. I went cycling with my roommate today. And I felt that the, the sun had come out, I was looking at the clouds, enjoying the breath, enjoying the free time. And I just wanted to share that with you that Life is beautiful. We just have to take it one step at a time. We got to remember to breathe. Sometimes we don't breathe. Sometimes I'm talking so fast. It's, it's like I'm not even aware about slowing down. I'm not even aware about breathing or I'm not even realizing that it's all going to be okay. It's all going to be okay. And and something else that I have to tell you is that I have these moments where nothing seems real at all, that I just feel like I'm in this other dimension where everything is really heightened. And I'm, I'm not on any drugs because I don't do drugs, I don't drink, I don't smoke pot or anything. But sometimes I feel like the energy is so super high that I literally am I'm looking at the world and I'm like, this is not even real. So what are we worrying about? You know, but I know that's that's really trippy. Um, when I was driving to work, and I was listening to music, and you know, I love music, so I blast my music sometimes. And I know it drives people in Melbourne crazy, um, but um, I really get lost in the sound of music. Music takes me to another galaxy, like a heightened dimension. But sometimes I feel like that just normally, like, is this real? I don't know if this happens to you that you just look at your life not just your life but you look at the world when you're walking or you're cycling or you're exercise but like i think mainly when you go outside you go out your door you start walking you start cycling i don't know if it happens to you that you just think is this real is this real and i'm not saying that it's not real but i'm just wondering if you ever question the whole thing like are we real and i know we pinch ourselves and you know, you look at yourself and you look at the hairs on your hand and you look at your bones and you see your tendons and you look at, you just look at your skin and you think, this is what makes me. Is it? Is it? You know, and of course, if we take a knife and we cut, that's very painful. Like, oh, that's real. Pain is real. Um, so I don't know if you have these existential moments. <laughs> I know that you probably think that's pretty out there but I wanted to share them with you to know that there's always dimensions to this reality that we're in and I think as you know you take the time to slow down wherever you are even at work you can take that moment where you're like like what am I doing <laughs> and just see is is this real and I know my roommate the other day was laughing at me, you know, when I was like, look at the numbers, and he's like, everything's spiritual, you know, and it was funny, you know, he was taking a crack at me, and I thought, you know, it's, it's, it's cool, because I know it sounds wacky to people, and we put on the radio, and the first thing, the first thing we heard on the radio was, things are looking up and up, and he started laughing, he was like, oh my god, yeah, and then the next thing was, like, smooth sailing from here, you know, something like that, you know, he was just like, bawling you know because he didn't because i said okay let's see what the radio is going to say right now and then boom then we just go and move it on up you know whatever <laughs> he just thought it was hilarious and i thought i'm glad if i can make you laugh even if you're laughing at me so what you know it's putting a smile on your face what 
you know, I mean, I'm not an actor or actress by any means, but in a way we are. We're like the actors and actresses of our life, you know. This is the master plan. You know, life is your master plan, and you just have to be happy with your plan. Don't worry about what other people think about your plan. You just got to be happy with what you're doing with your life. And, you know, I'm still learning as well. I've had a lot of things to learn since. I'll tell you the truth, my parents were not really impressed by the idea of a creative child. You know, my mother wanted a rose, and she's like, who is this sunflower? So she was constantly trying to make me to something I wasn't, and I, I was a disappointment for her. And that's okay. I love my mother. She's a, she was a very strong woman, and she had a hard life, so I think that's why she wanted me to have a good life. And so she was like, creativity is not going to get you anywhere. And my father as well, you know, didn't really foster my creativity, although he's a very creative person, because I think we were both worried about survival. And so I understand I, you know, being left to my own devices meant that I was often, you know, learning through my imagination, you know, like in my own little world of, well, what's possible in challenging reality since I was left alone a lot of the time um, and so I tell you that to to remind you that everything is possible and that we can change we have the potential to change as people and even especially if you're not grown up in a home that's very nurturing you can still change you can still learn to develop that confidence in yourself believe me it hasn't been an easy road but let me tell you it's possible it's possible and I think the recipe is to, you know, to daily go outside, go out of your house and go out of your home, wherever you are, get fresh air, look up at the clouds, look at trees, move your body, walk, cycle, swim, whatever you, you like to do. You know, I just like to, I like walking, I like cycling, I love yoga, you know, probably I'll join the gym if they give me this gym job, I'll start Zumba. <laughs> Pilates, you know, okay, why not? And uh, and then eating healthy, you know, going plant-based and, you know, every day a smoothie. And yet, it's it's quite a journey. It's quite a journey to, to learning to love yourself as you are, that you're happy with yourself, that you make yourself your best friend. So that way, no matter what happens, you always can turn to yourself as a as a resource you can turn to yourself as someone that you know when you feel down you don't run to drugs you don't run to alcohol you don't run to anything that you you're actually able to handle that wave of emotion because that's how i felt yesterday I had this wave of emotion and i was just like okay you can sit through it and i could sit through it because i had been through so many emotional roller coasters in my life with nobody there to really hold my hand and I'm really grateful for those moments and now I'm very blessed that I have very good people in my life like my housemates that do you know nurture my creativity that they do inspire me and that I do learn from them and that it's like a, it's a family feeling they're really like a family and, and then all of you every person who's watching you out there whoever you are because I don't know your names all of you I don't know who's watching my videos but I want to say thank you I want to say thank you and I said thank you last week but I'm still saying thank you because it means a lot to me because like I said I don't come from a family that respected my creativity that thought it would amount to anything and not that this is amounting to something I'm not doing this to get something out of it it's more like this is my vehicle to just inspire you to to love yourself as you are focus on your health because as you as you feel healthy, you feel happy. And I definitely, I felt great today because I went outside, I had a walk, I was with my housemate, we went cycling. You know, I, I had a wonderful day. Then I challenged myself, I went on this yoga audition. You know, it's been a wonderful day. And then, you know, I'm here with my, my housemates in the living room. And I have to say, I'm so lucky to have good people in my life. And that's, I think that's the whole thing. As long as you have nurturing people in your life who really get you, they get your mentality, you feel supported. It really makes a difference but but so is also taking care of yourself so just for all of you people who are like what happened Isolde are you okay I just want to say 
yeah i'm okay and i'll be at work on monday 6 a.m and just do the best i can and that's it that's all we can do do the best we can take things step by step and i just wanted to say thank you again for your support and so bye till the next time